Welcome, and here we go again to number nine of our reviews, the penultimate review, the penultimate episode of series 12. Yes, I don't know why I'm saying that with uncertainty. I know it's series 12. So the finale has begun, the apparently incredible game-changing finale that they've been hyping up and advertising ahead of episodes like Can You Hear Me and uh, Haunting of Philodiodati in the trailers they had uh, sort of the the two two episodes left and then randomly they said uh, oh no watch this week's one because it sets up next week and it's just odd the promotion anyway um, I like last week's episode it was a very strong setup for the series finale uh, very atmospheric very good performance from J.D. Whittaker, um, Cyberman, Ram. Um, so, yeah, there were a lot of expectations lying on this week's episode. And was it what I wanted it to be? Not entirely. I can't lie and say I was completely ecstatic about this one. Because I was a bit underwhelmed. Um, not because my expectations were high. Because I try to reserve my expectations when going into an episode. And usually I have a an anticipation for Doctor Who. As I'm a, a Doctor Who creator and everything. So, yeah. it just There's so much resting on this two-part finale. And I can't help but feeling a little bit too, a little bit uh, disappointed. It wasn't bad. I'm not saying it was bad. It wasn't Battle of Ransgraf Kolos number two. Um, it felt more like a finale than that, and it had a sort of ambitious scale. It felt like though it was about 10, 15, 20 minutes of Doctor Who, which was uh, expanded into 50 minutes of Doctor Who. It felt like there was a lot of filler going on. It felt like all it was trying to do was build that cliffhanger, which, judging by the fact that this was the one that was hyped up, as well as next week's, uh, by all the cast and crew, by the trailers, you'd expect something a little bit more. You'd expect something that delivered shocks and twists and turns. Um, maybe that's what next week's will do. Uh, but all it seemed to be... It seemed to just be a lot of dragging out to try and get to the cliffhanger. Which, to be honest, for me, the cliffhanger was entirely expected. I saw it from a mile off. I saw, I thought that the Master was going to return in it at some point, so I wasn't too shocked there. I was happy to see him back, but I wasn't like, oh my god, it's the Master, like I was the first time he popped up in Spyfall. Um, and when Gallifrey popped up, I knew that was coming probably as soon as they arrived on Ko Sharma. So initially I was thinking Ko Sharma is going to be Gallifrey, but I knew we'd see Gallifrey at the end of this episode somehow. So none of it was really a shock. The cliffhanger just felt like it was built up to for about half an hour. The other one, the one with them trapped in the, the Cyberman place. And I don't know, they'll probably get out of it somehow. So it, it just feels like, this whole episode was building to a cliffhanger, which wasn't that good anyway. So it wasn't bad. It was. It had the scale of what a finale should be. We went to different places. We had a whole host of Cybermen um, who, I don't know, I'm not a fan of the sort of Iron man -y Cybermen, and there was a lot of that this week. Um, there were some cool action sequences. There were some very explosive, exciting moments. Uh, like the bit with the Cyberman heads floating around and killing everyone. Um, again, a bit, a bit too, a bit too much focus really on side characters and adding in unnecessary subplots. I don't know what the hell they're trying to go for with this Brendan plot. I guess we'll find out next week. I'm just, I'm thinking it's a lone Cyberman origin story, and I don't care. I don't care how the Lone Side Man was formed. We've, we've seen it. You know, if they were going to do that, they should have done it before we saw the Lone Side Man. I mean, we've, we've seen it in two episodes now. 
why would I care about how it was forged? Like, it's just a sign man. It doesn't need any form of explanation. It's like trying to hammer home a point to dumb audiences. Um, I just It just felt like unnecessary, and I feel it will be unnecessary, unless, of course, it is relevant somehow in terms of the, the story arc. Um, you know, this guy might be the timeless child. <laughs> no, probably not. It's not going to be that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I... I, I can't say I was too delighted by it. I can't say I was sitting there waiting for something shocking, something big, something massive. Because people said, wait, the, the, like Mandy Gill and, and the crew and the cast, they were all saying, um, don't miss this episode live. And, and, and that's what the critics were saying that I'd seen it already. So I was, I was expecting some sort of massive shock some new part of the Timeless Child mystery, maybe. But I think it's fair to say most of us knew that the Master would be appearing in this two-parter anyway. It's lovely to see him. I'm glad he's in it, because he's one of the best parts of the series. I love that um, (laughs) all the time the Doctor just snaps at Ryan, like, rather than snapping at the others. Um, You sort of get the impression that she doesn't actually really like them. But Ryan seems to be the one that gets sort of most of the slack, which would be the case because he's an annoying twat. But um, yeah, that's interesting. I it's it's a shame because I don't have much to say on this episode, which is meant to be the biggest episode of the series so far. There's nothing unexpected that happened. There's nothing that shocked me. That's nothing that kept me on the edge of my seat really, um, or glued to the screen. It was just, it was good, it was good Doctor Who, um, but it's not that it didn't feel like a first part of a finale, but it sort of lacked some elements that it could have been, and again, like a lot of the episodes this series and, and last series, it could have been a lot, lot better than what it was. Maybe after next week's episode it will be more satisfying when you watch the two episodes together, but it's an individual episode. It just feels sort of, uh, it feels sort of a bit dull for a finale, and that's not what should happen. So I can't say I was a huge fan of it. I'd probably give it a six out of ten, which for a finale, I, I'd, I'd be hoping to give it the best episode so far, as this is the most important one so far, as it's the first part of the finale. Next week, no excuses for it to be. Um, to be game changing and from the trailer and the master's appearance it look, looks like it will be game changing but we'll have to wait and see won't we so timeless children next week uh i can't say this episode has made me think i'm so excited for the the final episode i'm so excited to see where where the the story goes next I'm excited for the elements of the story that I was already excited for in the first place from last week. So it didn't really... It feels like I'm going into next week's episode with the same expectations and hopes from last week's episode, and really they should have been raised or should have changed. So, yeah, we had no mention of the Alliance sending the thing through time. You know, we had no uh, Times Child references yet, but... You know, I wasn't expecting much on that sort of side, but it just felt like it was lacking at times. It felt like it was a bit too slow for for the finale. Um, And it felt like it was dragging on a lot for quite a lot of the runtime, which was a bit annoying. So please leave your thoughts in the comments below. I might be back with a video soon. I'm hoping for a a strong finale, a game-changing finale, one that actually shocks me. Because I've seen people saying they were shocked online. I'd be very surprised if they actually were. Because I think the twist they pulled on us anyway, uh, the twist they pulled on us here, were nothing new. It was just what we sort of saw coming and what we'd already had already. So there's no new pieces of the puzzle in either the Cyberman arc or the Timeless Child arc. So nothing really new here. Um, but it left me underwhelmed. It's no world enough from time. 
I'll put it like that. Um, so yeah, a bit, a bit underwhelmed. I didn't dislike it. I didn't think it was bad. Um, and I would, it, it's not average because it's above average and it's not filler by any means. But I just felt like a bit underwhelmed by what it was trying to do at times. But a lot of good in there. Um, and most of it sets up a promising finale for next week. Trailer looks good for next week. So I'm hoping it is. Anyway, I will see you next week uh, for my final review of the series, The Times Children, and then after that, I'll do an overview, and then God knows what I'll do after that, but uh, yeah, Series 12, surprisingly, shockingly coming to an end, uh, very in, in a week's time. I'm hoping next week's finale is great, leaves me a bit more ecstatic as to the future, and you know, I'm I'm excited to get some answers to the many questions we have, but in a 65 minute episode, which is long for a Doctor Who episode, and the amount of balls they're juggling at the moment, and potentially adding more balls to that uh, to that juggling chamber, it feels like it'll be a bit hard to cram that into that space of time. So if next week feels rushed and feels like there's too many elements crammed into one episode and this one feels like it, there's a sort of 15 minute episode stretched out to a 50 minute episode that would be quite frustrating because it had the potential to do something better than that but let's hope next week's is great uh, i hope you all enjoyed the episode and i will see you next week <laughs>